and welcome to episode 3 of the Travelize podcast. My name is Dan. And I'm Phil. And in today's episode, well, we're going to do something a little bit different. As some of you may know, Travelize as a company has turned 13. <laughs> We were established in 2004. Yep, the same year that Facebook was founded and that Friends ended. Truly a year of great joy and great sorrow. So now that we're a teenager, we wanted to share with you some of the work that we've been doing with students from international schools all over the world. And Phil, you yourself have actually just come back from an international schools trip in Romania. Yeah, it was a fantastic experience. What we've been doing over the past few years is working with international schools in both London and Hong Kong. The students come on our trips as sighted travellers and really bring an amazing enthusiasm. They get to learn about new cultures and countries and offer a sighted guide to our visually impaired travellers. Yeah, they really have been great trips and in this episode we've put together a bit of a taste of three of the holidays that we've done with international students. Two to Romania, like the one Phil has just returned from, and one from Granada. And now in these recordings you'll be able to hear our founder and director Amar Latif chatting with the students and with the visually impaired travellers. We hope you enjoy it and we'll be back to chat with you in a few minutes. Hello, my name is Amar Latif. I'm the founder and director of Travel Eyes. I'm blind and I always wanted to see the world, but every time I tried to explore it, I was faced with restrictions. So I set up Travel Eyes, an international tour operator that enables blind people to travel the world with freedom and independence. We work with many international schools across the world and students join our trips to be the eyes for our blind travellers as part of their creativity, action, service program. My name's Richard Parker and I'm a secondary principal of an international school in Hong Kong. And I'm currently with a group of our students acting as guides for Travel Eyes, taking uh, visually impaired tourists around Spain. And this is the second time I've come on this trip because I think it's such a great trip. I was at school and I heard about this trip and I was so excited and then I just told my teacher I'm definitely going no matter what you say. I think it's really meaningful to guide the visually impaired and um, I can also learn a lot from the trip. So here I am with Barry, hi. Hello. Alright, Barry where are you off to now? We're on our way to Sevilla in the south of Spain. So is this the first time that you've been on a travel ice holiday where you've been guided by international students? Uh, yes, I've never done that sort of thing before, so I really commend what they're doing because I never would have done that at that age. Without a service like this, what would you do? I would find it difficult to travel abroad. I've done it once before and it was quite stressful. I found booking the excursion stressful, getting from the airport to the hotel, just the city holidays with travel ice take that pressure and stress away from the, the holiday and make it a better experience for me really. There are three women sitting on one side of the bench and they seem to be broken hearted for the man on the other side of the monument who is a priest or somebody of that stature. Why do you think he's a priest or a monk? Uh, the clothes that they wear and there's a, a black angel, a young boy who seems to be prancing between the woman and the man. I can explain it better. Hey, <laughs> bravo! Okay, I've got Megumi here. Hi, yeah. Megumi. Hello. Megumi, I can hear water. That's yeah. all I know. It's so like a fountain and there's this very big sculpture. There's like a king and then a man that's looking at the king in a way that's like looking up to a person. But, and then there's this very big rug falling down and then there's two ladies holding the at the end of the rug and the whole atmosphere is like the king is the top leader and everyone is like looking up to him. So I've got Fiona here with me. Hi, Fiona. Hi. What made you choose this travelized trip? It's a lifetime experience, and it makes me think a lot because even though some people can't see, they can still do what normal people do. So I'm here with Joan. Hi, Joan. Hello. Is this your first ever trip with international students? Oh, yes, indeed it is. They're absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I don't think that you would find youngsters getting hold of you and saying, come on, take my arm, uh, walking down the street. Also, being there, just at the moment, you need something, they are there, and that's good. 
What's happening on the left there? Um, there's people like busking, I guess. A man playing a guitar, and then two women clapping their hands and singing at the same time. Can you hear the shoes tapping on the floor? Ah, uh, yes. Is that yeah. the shoes tapping on the floor? Yeah. So we're we're gonna be doing that tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. I'm really excited. <laughs> Here we are at the Flamenco Dance School. Flamenco, as we know, is music and dancing that starts in the 18th century as a mixture of a gypsy, bass, and a Arabic, combining the different emotions. So, today's our last day. Yeah. How do you feel? I feel really sad, but then I feel quite glad that I did happily finish this journey because usually, like, I'll get really homesick. But then this time, I don't know why, like, no homesickness at all. Maybe it's because I spent more time to share the experience with um, visual impaired partners more than focusing things on myself because I didn't even have time to think about it. How have you found the describing and the communicating? I think now I'm better at describing things. I'm trying my best to paint them a picture. Oh no, today is the last day of a wonderful trip. And <laughs> on behalf of the students and teachers, we would like to thank Amar and Hannah for organizing this wonderful trip and leading us throughout the whole journey. You gave us some of the best moments, some of the best memories that we will carry on into our life forever. <laughs> So that was our trip to Granada with an international school from Hong Kong, and up now, two different trips to Romania, firstly with the International School of London, Surrey, and then with the Victoria Shanghai Academy from Hong Kong. Now in these, alongside our travellers, you'll also hear some turkeys, some chickens and some cows being milked, finishing with a special number from the Victoria Shanghai Academy. So enjoy! I'm Jasmine, I'm 14 years old, I come from the Netherlands and Turkey and I go to Eisel Surrey and we are in Romania right now with Travel Eyes. So what we're doing here is we're guiding the visually impaired um, and describing to them where we are and yeah we're just helping them out so they can experience the fun as well. <laughs> Yay sheep! There's everyone! Sorry, Welcome I love see. sheep. <laughs> uh, like there's a big group of sheep and they're they have all of like colors on their back. I don't know, like marks. And there's there's like three brown sheep and the rest are all white. Oh, that sounds nice. You can hear the bells from the I sheep. I can. Yes. Yeah. Can you hear the bells. <laughs> what what benefit do you think that sighted students can get from coming on a trip like this and guiding? Well, you're experiencing something totally different because I what I noticed that. When I go on a trip, I usually look around once and don't really notice anything special. But while you're guiding someone and you're describing something to them, you're like, like it opens, like it opens your eyes even more. Like you're actually starting to notice these things that you would never actually like think about. Gosh, and the, the, the chairs move. The oh. <laughs> Hi, my name is Susan Stewart. Um, I work at uh, the International School of London in Surrey. I'm uh, head of languages. Uh, this is now the second time we've done a trip with Travel Eyes. Last year it was to Morocco, this year we're in uh, Romania. Uh, it certainly won't be the last one. It's uh, quite difficult to describe what it is uh, to take students uh, on a Travel Eyes trip, and I think you almost have to see it to believe it. But what we did see definitely was students who might have lacked a little bit in confidence, students who sometimes might have struggled to put things into words, over the week really blossoming and rising to the challenge that they were given uh, to work with the VIs. Uh, the students also come back and, and really see the world in a different way. They notice things they hadn't noticed before. Um, they're, they're obviously inspired by the VIs that they've led. Um, hearing their different stories, seeing how they work and how they manage uh, their lives. They're so ugly. Are they? What do they look like? Their um, mouth, there's like, like swinging like around. skin hanging down from right, them. I'm enjoying this. One, two, three. <laughs> 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 One, two, 
So my name is Steve Ewins, I'm from Bristol and I'm visually impaired. When I first heard about these trips, I was a little unsure as to whether I should come on them. You're never quite sure whether it's the right thing to do to be guided by a student, but every time I've come on one of these trips, it's been amazing. The students are just so caring, so helpful. They really look after you and you get so much from it from my perspective because it allows you to come to these amazing places and do incredible things that you would never be able to do normally without the help of the students. One of the amazing things about coming on these holidays is, is to actually experience the development of the students over the week. Within a couple of days, even sometimes a couple of hours, they've already blossomed and they're starting to be comfortable in your presence. Their guiding is amazing. They're so caring around you and they, they seem to develop as, as individuals and gain more confidence from the responsibility that they've got for that week. Okay, my name is Tim, Tim Beck. I'm the teacher. I'm one of the teachers at VSA. This is my first travel ice trip and I have to say I've thoroughly enjoyed it. The fact that you're giving so many people, so many different people from different backgrounds to get together and go to a new place. But for me, it's been incredibly fun, enriching, touching, sometimes challenging, but overall, it's been a fabulous experience. And seeing our 20 kids interact with people that they usually will not interact with. For a lot of them, this was their first time meeting a VI. At first, maybe they were a bit quite shy, but as days went by, it was beautiful to see how they started to trust each other. They started to develop these rare relationships, and it was incredibly moving. I think Travelize did a beautiful job. We're in Sigashora, and we're right at the top, and uh, Crystal and Sonia are gonna tell me what's all around. Right in front of it, actually, there's a lot of co small cottages, and the roofs are all made out of like cobblestones, and it's red and like kind of brownish. And then there's some trees behind it, different trees such as like the Christmas trees that we always see oh, when wow. we come here. And how does this feel compared to um, Hong Kong at the moment? The fresh air. There's a lot of fresh, fresh air. Yes. Yeah. If it's in it's Hong really Kong, cool. it'll be buildings after buildings after buildings. It's all skyscrapers, yeah. and then it's like also fresh air and so like countryside. Which is good. I that way. Hey, we're in Cebu and we're walking in the square. It's raining, but we're gonna sing. Woo! Because we're happy. Yay! Every now and then I get a little bit lonely and you're never coming around. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit tired and this is Do you know that Romanian people are looking at us thinking, where the hell are they from? <laughs> What's around us, Ashley? Wow. Um, we're surrounded by some old architectures. There's a building uh, just uh, to the left in front of you that's a bit yellow, beige color. There's three stories. And on the second story, just at the edge, there's a bit of round corner. It's decorated with a fence. The fence has like red flowers ornating it. And it, there's, there's green edges for just surrounding it. So the entire place looks like a flower garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry. Can I have a little? <laughs> He's trying to hide it. Okay. No. 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 So we really hope you enjoyed that uh, and if you want to know any more information about our international school trips or any of our holidays then please do email us on info at travelize-international.com or visit our websites.
And don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all of our content. And we're really enjoying getting the feedback from you, so please do let us know what you thought of this episode uh, by commenting below or do get in touch with us through our website, which will be listed in the description, along with the rest of our social media. We've been really enjoying reading your comments and we're using all of your suggestions to try and make these podcasts just a little bit better. So for today, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. I've been Dan. And I'm Phil. And we really look forward to sharing the adventure with you next time. Thank you.